Welcome to Art Talk Music. My guest today is this wonderful bassist that you're listening to right now, Mr. Michael Burt. He came down to my house about a month ago and we spoke in depth about his story of rediscovering himself after 10 years away from his instrument and how moving to New Mexico, specifically Los Alamos, really was another opportunity for him to fall in love with music and get to teach and work with what he loves doing. He's an enthusiastic guy, and we talk about quite a lot of stuff. It's it's an awesome conversation that I know you're really going to get a lot out of, as I did. And I'm going to insert quite a bit of music within the podcast and, as I usually do, at the end of the podcast. We played a couple of tunes, and right in the middle, we're going to play one of the songs that Mr. Michael Burt brought to the table. It's got this totally old school, uh, 90s, 80s kind of vibe to it, and I love it. I know you're going to enjoy it. If you're listening to us on iTunes, as always, we encourage you to subscribe, to like, to comment, give us a review, and definitely tell a friend. We get started at a pretty funny place in the conversation as to where I hit record. So I'm going to let it explain itself. Here we go. So we're good. We got some good love. I wish I had the uh, my right what? bass. I mean, this bass is good. It's Sounds definitely good, serviceable. Sounds it's good. not a back end. Mm-hmm. But it's like... Certain experiences can't happen the same. Like, I have a heavy-handed uh, low E. Like, when I strike the low E, yeah. it's real heavy-handed. It's like, boom. Like, yeah, yeah. But this this low E is set very low. Uh-huh. So it's like, it's like, it's like I want to strike it like a man, and it's a kitty cat. And you can't, yeah, and yeah. And I can't, not even, heard like, it. It'll be not like, even like I'm trying to strike it like a man, and it's a kitty cat, but I'm like, Trying to strike it like a man, <laughs> and it is a kitty cat that knows that there's no way I can actually hit it. And the worst I could ever do to it is gently pet it. You see what I mean? <laughs> and so that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like trying to attack the E string. There's no power. There's no like. There's no gusto. And that's what like. That's my my thing. That's quite an entrance like, to introduce Mr. Michael Burt to Art Talk Music. What's happening, oh, Michael Art Burt? Art Talk Music. Thank you, bro, for being on the podcast, my man. Thank Making you. the it's drive amazing. from Los Alamos, my man. It's a dream come true. No, nah, man. Come it on. It is. It's, it's funny. It's oh. so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling me about your radio personality, you know, about your, your radio use. Let's let's start there because, you know. The, That's a funny place like to start. I said, like That's I said. That's the least the name, place I ever thought you would start. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the podcast is Art Talk Music. This for was a me, long it's, time ago. It's celebrating. Yeah, but it's celebrating. Celebrating how, how we can all be creative by talking as oh. all of us do, as mm-hmm. you know, creating some kind of art mm-hmm. form if it's poetry, if it's if it's actual it's visual true. art, and some kind of music if we love it and enjoy it and let it affect us, or if we create it ourselves. There's a know? lot of different reasons for art, especially nowadays. Hmm. You know, hmm. and certain roads are. I think most of, most of the roads nowadays are most common. Yeah, like like it's for business. Like art is a business. And that's a different sport. It's a different sport than I'm in. Mm-hmm. I can, I service in that sport. Like if someone needs a bass player for a show, right. but like I do not participate in this uh, the sport of music business. That's all. Like in terms of like promoting 
music and being an artist. Although, ironically, okay. I am very much an artist. Right. Oh, I can't with, help it. Without like, a doubt. I mean, yeah. I, I think all, all of us, as, mm-hmm. you know, in, in the special people that even even are the people that initially introduced me to you, you know, for them to speak such high praises, like, oh, sh- shit, man, this this is a cat, you know. It's so ironic. You got to come meet him. But all right. So, so I'm the Ninja Turtles of musicians. Because <laughs> your story is a, <laughs> it is a crazy <laughs> one. And we can go in so many directions. Real talk. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Yeah, for real. Where's that pizza at? <laughs> actually, <I> have, <laughs> actually, the other day I went to. It was a snowstorm outside, and it was there's in, in Los Alamos. I live in Los Alamos. It can it can snow out of anywhere, and so there's like my car has. I'm not a rich person. I tell you, there's a diff a large difference between fame and fortune. I, t- I, I my my tires <laughs> on my car are like bald, and so I drive up the mountain to a middle of a blizzard, and I'm slipping and sliding, but I'm starving. So Jesus. I'm like, let's go to Domino's. I, I decide to go to Domino's. I stop at Domino's and I get a pizza. And obviously, there's a snowstorm. There's no one in the store. They're not even <laughs> delivering. So here, to get to the push line. This is long winded, but at any rate, I uh, they give me. A, I finally get my uh, pizza. And I take it home and I open the box and I'm like, I can't believe I made it home. I'm starving. Oh, at least I get something I want. I you know, I'm kind of in shock in a way. Yeah, yeah. I open the box. The pizza has no cheese on it. What? No, let's qualify. Let me take the rewind. <laughs> Let me just rewind it back. And I have to, did I have any, did it have any toppings at I least? I took a picture of this <laughs> to just, just to show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I opened the box. And like, let's qualify. I was in the middle of a snowstorm. No one in the store. Just me. I order pizza and there's no cheese on it. How does this happen? <laughs> this is the time to shine. Yeah, yeah. This is when you shine. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I don't want to sidetrack. I'm sorry. <laughs> Art, talk, music. Oh, yeah. I'm happy to be here. Hey, Amen. You know? I'm yeah. happy to be here and uh, uh, I have a really nice space and I'm just happy. I love New Mexico. It is the love of my life. All right. So, so let's. All right. So I, I'm gonna pinpoint you for a second because you mm-hmm. just talked about this nice base. Now, I just did a gig with you this past weekend, mm-hmm. and you were playing an electric bass because what happened to your main baby? Tell, I me, was, tell me about uh, that. I was doing a gig at Taos Trail Inn that I do on Fridays with uh, John Ringel, who's, who's a, an extraordinary Maestro. artist, yeah, a, a great piano player. And I, I have a little car, so I, I was taking my car to my bass, and I just I had too much gear, too much gear, and I, bump, I heard a bump, and I heard something different. Like, it didn't sound like the bow fell out of my bass because I like to keep my bow, like, tucked under my uh, E string. Yeah. Uh, it was my fingerboard. My fingerboard fell off. Yeah. The Ouch. thing that you touch Ouch. that makes the, the, the note that you slide, it fell off right before the gig. Fortunately, I had a backup electric bass that I was not prepared to play because it's not, like, it's not my main gig. But, like, after that night, I was determined... To remind myself that it was my main gig, part of, part I mean, of my ar- uh, artillery. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it definitely feels like whenever you play an instrument for so long, get so accustomed to it, mm-hmm. and then you have to jump onto another instrument, even if there's just tiny differences, there are huge differences. It's a different translation. Like yeah. on the on the string bass, you're shifting for certain things that like. Uh, they're essentially it's fr- uh, it is fretless it has no frets so like you're shifting for moments that on an electric imp- instrument you can do one three one two three four that's the fingering you can literally right. do that right and you know you're a guitar player yeah. more than anyone and um but on the string bass it's very tactical especially if you want to be in tune and i come from the art of tact uh, tactical bass playing i i i, I played i played in uh Two first national Broadway tours, and I know why. It wasn't that I was like the man by any means, but I always played in tune because I had a tactic. I knew how I was going to approach every note, and that made me in tune, and that made me qualify to play at that level. So, so take me back mm-hmm. a little bit. I mean, I know we mm-hmm. we we hinted at the uh, mm-hmm. the broadcasting career, but we'll get to that later. Tell me. T- oh, take I'm me, sorry. Yeah. Take me back to Virginia. You know, to Virginia? That's where you're from. That's where I'm originally from, yeah. I I'm, I'm, uh, was born in uh, 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 Petersburg, Virginia, but all my uh, external family lives in Norfolk, Virginia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I have three sisters, highly ambitious sisters. My family is very competitive. And I don't even mean that on a, uh, like, a, uh, like an internal level, but like an external level. Like, mm. like we're like Spartans. 
You see, <laughs> really, seriously. So are you the middle, youngest, oldest? Where are you at in the in the sibling mix up? I'm the third to last. But among the ranks, I'm the baby. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. 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 I definitely uh, can sentiment with that. There's four in my immediately. And we all, they all play music. And I'm three, yeah. yeah. My sister, she owns, I think, it, last time I checked in with her, she owned two orchestras. She was principal chair of uh, two orchestras. And, you know, she's a, she has her own law firm. They're highly ambitious. Like I said, our family is really Spartan. So when I came up, my idea of music was in this kind of Spartan kind of discipline. You know what I mean? interesting way mm-hmm. to approach music for sure it is yeah. because while other people were looking at it like i saw it as a sport all i have to do is be better than you at that okay right and then i would just do that right, right. like it never occurred to me to do the things i do now like to practice for proficiency and to say things that i mean or to know to have the dexterity to say less I mean that's sure. really important too. Like, sure, without a doubt. I could I could fill a, a base uh, a, a base a base section like four four bars of phrase with a bunch of ace notes and runs and stuff. But maybe the best thing is to play a fourth. Do I actually know what that fourth sounds like if I try to take it underneath? You know, am I thinking of that? Do, is that do I have the facility to even consider that? I wasn't thinking of that when I was young, you know. But that's the stuff I think of now. Maturity, maturity, right? Yeah. Musical maturity. It's that's that's something that uh, back then I just wanted to cut you, no matter what instrument. Amen. I was like, I need to cut everyone in the room. Hey, but it's a defense tactic. That's how I was taught. Like, that's that's just how I think most. I don't know if most stringed instruments. I don't know if it's the same with brass or you know. I don't know. I I, th- I believe that singers are the same way, but I definitely had the same you know grow the same perspective growing up. But tell me a little and, bit about and, uh-huh. you, you know because obviously the the mindset of a Spartan and this Uh, sports approach mm, as well as this competitive mm, drive that eventually when you really, really bring yourself out or right, right, right. That that was where you were at. Right. Mm -hmm. And from that origin, eventually Mm kind of what happened? Cause you, you eventually hit, hit a wall. Yeah. I gave up because there was so much I wanted to say. There was so much I wanted to say, but I didn't have the facility to say it. All I knew how to do was beat someone. I didn't know how to say uh, what was in my heart. Yeah. Like, I didn't know how to translate it to my bass. It was so bad that I stopped. But I did start playing piano. That's when I took the, 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 uh, the masochistic route and I started learning piano. And for me, I wasn't granted resources. So I did things, uh, 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 you know, I starved. You know, I starve for art. I don't suggest that route. <laughs> it's not easy, man, and and it's hard. You know, encouraging young people. It is a route. To get into it. It is yeah. an enriching route. I mean, it's a, a deep doubt. route. Yeah, it's a sincere route. I think it's also but, the reality of of everyone who aspires to be a musician and and eventually one day pursue it as a, a, a livelihood. You know. Yeah. And we don't realize that eventually, you know, you don't do this for the money. So eventually, you will go hungry. If, yeah. You don't do certain things. How long did you not play bass? And, and how, how old were you years. when you started? Ten years. When you started that break? Ten years, almost ten years. Yeah. What, when did like you When did you hit that wall? Ten years. Probably. What, like twenty six? Uh, I was uh, coming off of twenty five. I I would I come from Edinburgh, Scotland, doing this uh, working for this company, C Venues, for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, mm-hmm. and I came back home to Stafford, assured. That like the momentum that I had just gained because before that tour I was doing the national tour of Oklahoma yeah and uh, playing uh, playing bass at that time just double bass and I I was assured that life was going to continue to be good like it was gonna the ride was gonna continue so far everything in life I tried worked every yeah. audition I went for worked yeah got back to Stafford that stopped yeah that stopped quick I went from doing that to being a buster at a restaurant. And no one around me was ready to tell me that I was even capable of doing anything else. <laughs> and, and I fought against it, against the tide, <laughs> until eventually I just gave up. Like the tide won. The tide won. I gave up. I, be, you know, I gave up being an artist. And I sat in the bottom of my parents' basement. And you know, besides some uh, personal spiritual things that happened uh, later on, it was pretty, pretty fruitless. Not really fruitless, but a pretty uh, 
uh, disparaging. Like that's a color in the crayon box that artists want to attain. That color, the dis- the desperation, the soul. But that's a hard road to get that color crayon. And there's other ways to express music than to have to search for that. People die because of that. To search for that color. You know, I happen to have it in my hand. I had, and if you don't believe me, I had a heart, a heart attack that took 40% of my heart away. You know, I had that color. And, uh, and so, so let's talk about that. Like uh-huh. what, what kind of led to your heart attack? How old were you at that point? That was 34, uh, you said? I was 35. I'm 38 now, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you were back in Virginia at that point? Uh, ba- yeah, back in Virginia. Uh, d- just wasting away, pretty much. Like, uh, at that point, I had withered to the point where I didn't believe I was worth anything. None of my lessons were successful. You know, uh, nothing was panning out. I was moving rocks, picking up dirt. <laughs> this is a really cool job I did. At one, at one point, there are these giant augers. Like, do you know what a giant auger is? An no, auger? no, what is it's that? It's a drill. It's an enormous drill, uh, almost like half of this room. Yeah. Or at least the, this, yeah, without the with the curtain at least. Yeah. And I would go to the top of the of uh, the auger and I'd beat it with a hammer, and, and and hammer the nail out, and then the crane would pick it up, and then put another auger down, and I would hammer the auger in, and I'm covered in mud because they're digging a hundred feet into the ground. And if you didn't know, at least in Virginia, if you yeah. dig a hundred feet into the ground, it's wet, muddy, uh, chaos. And so, I, anyway, I would hammer and then put the nails back in, and that would be my day. It was seventeen dollars an hour. It was a great. It was a. It was a great job. I wish I was more of a, a man. I'm like a man, man, and I'm a very much a man, but I'm more of like a sportsman, not like a. I'm gonna go to the coal mine, yeah, yeah. you know, and then come home and be like. Yeah. But again, what? Still, even then, I was fighting against the tide, and I think that the heart attack. Going back to a heart attack, because I usually don't go back to things, right? Um, uh, the heart attack. Uh, it killed me because I wasn't being. It wasn't living into my nature. I was. I was a music. I was a highly capable person that was convinced in myself. I lost my edge, you know. And then randomly, just to, to speed things up, I don't know the speed of a podcast or the interest of the story, but bringing it to New Mexico, coming to New Mexico, moving to Los Alamos on a whim, on a on to, to anyone's credit, whim to me something much more personal. But I moved to Los Alamos, where some of the most brilliant minds on earth exist. And it takes me less than two months before I'm teaching their kids. Keep teaching their kids. Conducting their kids in a group. Working for Santa Fe Youth Orchestra, School of New Mexico of the Arts. To me, what happened? This was me? I was capable of this? It's amazing. Life is amazing. It's a powerful experience, the journey that unfolds. The short version. Unfolds, and I'm right? never going to write a book. Y'all don't even know about my business. I don't have Facebook. I don't do nothing like that. But, I, you know, at the same time, I have music I really want to promote. I feel like I, I need a pseudonym. I need. I want to take my music, and I just want to, like, have, like, someone that's not me. Is that the right word, pseudonym? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like an alter ego. Yeah, an alter yeah. ego that's not me, you know. And then I want to let somebody manage it. I just want to give them music. Stage you know? name. Yeah, something ridiculous. Like, a, I, and really, in my mind, if I have my, my, in my vision, it's a, a sock puppet. <laughs> and the name what? of the album the name of the artist would be Sock Puppet Genius <laughs> why Sock Puppet? because it doesn't matter anymore mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. nothing you you, it, you can be famous for anything so why not a Sock Puppet? has it been done yet? Ah, oh, I just probably ruined it dang it if it I'll, if people listen to this <laughs> they're gonna steal it immediately it's ruined it'll probably even create a genre at least archive this for the lawsuit I'm going to file later. There you go. <laughs> Copyrighted. Michael Burt. Our talk music. <laughs> Seal it up. So, so into moving to New Mexico and starting to play oh, and teach the, the children of, of, of New Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, that was two years ago? Two years ago. Yeah, just maybe just getting mm. to that or maybe over at this point. It's hard to tell. New Mexico has a way of making you forget things that you'd care about in other places. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, like, it, it's, it's so bad. The procrastination is so bad in this culture that, like, it's okay to procrastinate. Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. I forgot two days. I missed a court date. Judge says, oh, it's okay. I understand. Gosh, I was busy, too. That's New Mexico for you. <laughs> That's New Mexico. I did, it wasn't like that in Virginia. They're like, hey, boy. You know, you can't even fight it. All right, I'll be your boy. I don't care what it means. I'll be your boy. Just, just let me go home. 
it's a much older court system too, you know. Yeah, what Virginia? Come on now, it's the home of the Confederacy. That's what I'm saying. Oh, we drive down the road every day. This says Jeff Davis Highway. <laughs> Jeff Davis Highway. This, if you think about this, that's like driving down Germany with Hitler Highway. Your most major highways, Hitler Highway. Like seriously, Jeff Davis was the president of the Confederacy. He lost. Why is he dri- Why are we driving down his road? I mean, we don't even have a Dallas Cowboy Street. Okay, okay. If you want to put somebody that defends Virginians and DC people, call it Dallas Cowboy Street. How about that? <laughs> call it Dallas Cowboy Street. That would be. I would accept that. But Jeff Davis, that's unacceptable. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're in a PC culture, but in a way, to you know. The Confederacy got to have their middle I mean, finger somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is because it's not just there At in Virginia. At least they're not burning my house down. There's Fine, a Jeff- take your street. There's a, Jeff- <laughs> there's a Jefferson Davis Parkway in Louisiana, too. You know? There is? Oh, yeah. But Virginia's the home of the Confederacy. Right, right, right. Do you see what I mean? Right, right, It's the right. very spirit of the idea. Right. And we have a road named after the president of that. That's disgusting. I'm not a political person, right. but that's disgusting. Right. Mm. But anyway, it does speak to the, does it not speak to the culture? Yeah. It's like it's yeah. a litmus of the culture in a way. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is a counterculture toward the north, but the only you know that's really based on the economics of the Department of Defense. Everybody's eating from that branch, and you know it supports some of the richest communities in uh, uh, the United States. Look it up. Uh, richest uh, area per uh, capita. I think yeah. at least six out of ten of those places are in Northern Virginia, wow. and they all eat from the government. Wow. Yeah. It's just how it goes. So that was the culture I was raised in, but it also flirts, depending on your economic level, yeah. you, you don't see those kind of things. But I came home poor and ambitious, but then eventually the poverty was like, oh, I was sucked in, sucked in, sucked into poverty. <laughs> you know? I guess we couldn't help it, you know? Yeah. I was playing music. I was writing music. I just felt like everything I produced sucked because my parents thought my music sucked. Now, now I want to talk about that because that, that's no, no, <laughs> for reals. Like the joy because, of my life, because actually. I mean, you, you, you're pouring, you, you're life. pouring your heart, and that's that's your spirit. I mean, that's the kind of generous person you you, you are. Since I mean, you know, I've met you. Oh and, no, and I just hope the I'm way not that you judgmental. Though. No, no, no. I'm but not, but I, I recognize that the impact of a fatherly figure not supporting their children is so important. I mean, I personally, my oldest brother was a cage fighter, and my parents did not support him, and to that effect, he did not. But pursue to it. my dad's credit. It mm-hmm. spartanized my outlook. Eventually, like, eventually. Eventually, yeah. It took like 30 years That's for me to be like, you know what? And it actually took when my mom died. So When my mom died, I was like, oh, I actually, now that I know that it's about me, it's going to be me and I don't have like my advocate, mm-hmm. like I need to just be like a gangster. You know what I mean? And like I need to have more of kind of an attitude. Like, Take things into your own hands. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like my mom. My mom cared about a lot of people. She To me, she died young. It's a... Uh, is 63 young? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. To me, she died young, but she died worrying about people. She's always had people on her mind. She's a loving, 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 loving person. And I was very, very much like her until she died. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't anymore. I was like, what? What? Am, what is this? And I think everybody around me smelled it, too. And then I felt like it was one of those Matrix moments where, like, uh, everybody looked like uh, the Agent Smiths and were kind of coming at me. And I was like, uh-oh, I need everybody to break this out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this feeling is. I, I, you know, I think it was some kind of, it was some kind of, some religious tension, really. I'm not gonna, definitely not going to talk about that. Talk about a lot of things, not that. But I was like, right. I need to break out. Right. And the funny thing is, is it was a prayer. I th- feel like I've been avoiding it. Maybe that's why I've been so wordy. But I, it was a prayer that took me to someone telling in my congregation saying, come to New Mexico. And I I was like, this is smart. I didn't have anything with me. I wasn't even playing music. I didn't have an upright bass, you know. This point I have three. You know? Yeah. Anyway, I'm just rambling. It's you can edit this later. It's beautiful. Edit what, bro? Beautiful beautiful edition. Edit. This what? is a beautiful edit edition. What? Edit. Oh, it's what? horrible. Come on. Now. Beautiful edition. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna not edit it in the script. Gonna call it in the mic burn stick. I don't know. I'm just talking. So you I can't you, even believe I just you've been playing some of your music for me. You've been playing some original music for me, which is yeah. so cool, man. Because getting to share original music with friends of mine. I don't is share music. Awesome. Yeah. I, and I appreciate you, you mm-hmm. you know, you you confiding in me to mm-hmm. let me play I'll, some I'll share this and, uh, though. I think it's funny. It has like a retro, like when I made it, like the thing about, to put it all in a nutshell, this sob story uh, in a (laughs) nutshell, is it taught me to have like a a, a sense of humor about things. Like what else are you going 
gonna do. People are gonna feel how they're gonna feel, and that's like the lesson of the, the story. People are gonna feel like how they're gonna feel. So progress, progress. You know, be smart, but progress. You know, I let a lot of uh, doubt hold me down for a lot of time. Maybe it could have been the same way in Virginia, and I have to weigh that option. Like it, maybe it wasn't just the New Mexico has been kind, but New Mexico has been quite kind. New Mexico has been quite kind. Well, and and had it been anywhere, I love these kids. Had it been anywhere else, like Michael, you, you know what I'm saying? That that reset button of going somewhere else mm -hmm. is really mm -hmm. what it did. And and you came with open arms to my understanding of I how you came here, bro. Love for people, though, that's that what I'm saying. Never changed. You know, that never that's changed. just your general nature. But it's like yeah. for in terms of like how people receive uh, the value of art in New Mexico, it's that's much different. That's also almost beautifully mirrors i keep saying beautiful mm -hmm. that's a word that i gotta stop saying so much but you keep uh, um bringing up the point of how someone like yourself and and i feel like i'm like that myself as well you know i pour my heart out to mm -hmm. people all the time us being so you know that sensitive artist type are so vulnerable mm -hmm. and so when we go about I'll even putting go as something far as to say broken oh without a doubt you know? sincere musicians yeah. the only people who really understand the tragedy and actors pretend they pretend but actors do pretend that's what they do for a living the only people who really suffer the tragedies of art are comedians and musicians yeah i mean i mean i'm sure everybody has their own story you know what i mean but Without a doubt. I just mean in terms of like, if you're a comedian, and let me qualify this because I say a lot of brash things. I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. But like to produce a musical sound is so spontaneous. It's, it requires so much of your, uh, who you are at the very second. It's, it's frightening. It's frightening. I don't. It's not some attack. Do you see what I mean? What well, and beyond it being frightening, it's 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 what I'm getting at, which is being incredibly vulnerable. Because that's what I mean. Because you are putting your everything out there. Sure. And when you have the people that are nearest and dearest in your life, the people that raised you and birthed you, mm -hmm. not support and reject this aspect of your your work, your heart's work, your passion's work. And I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong in assuming mm -hmm. this, but absolutely that had a deep effect on your relationship with the music and yeah. your aspect of sure. um, playing this because, instrument, which seems to be your instrument more so than piano. After a while, because I, fail, I failed at it for so long. I really genuinely failed at it for a long time. Right, right. Like, I will chalk it to the game. I'm going to chalk it to the game. I failed at music. Let it be said. I failed for a long time I mean, with we all, sincerity. We all fail. I couldn't yeah. find the tonic yeah. in my mind. I hmm. could find the connections, connections hmm. abstractly, hmm. but I wasn't building them based on anything. I was hearing certain things. I always think, though, I could have been a, I could have been a really good engine, or at least like producer. I did work with the Grammy Award winning studio for a little bit, and that was really nice. But um, I, um, I definitely, in some ways, I feel like I lost time. But it, it uh, answered a question for me: Why music? Why music? And, and it answered a question for me, for me, because mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I like to say like things and sound like it's for everyone but that's yeah. not fair this yeah. is for me um that music is a language and through that language we can communicate kate a great joy um and uh, a lot of different emotions and it's a language a lot of different things a lot of different uh, uh some kind especially through rhythm you have to say this like when we're playing rhythm and you're playing rhythm guitar Mm -hmm. Playing into playing in, and I'm playing playing a bass line and you're playing into me and you're trusting what I'm doing yeah. rhythmically. Yeah. When it's really in sync or we have a percussion ensemble, being just about the rhythm can be just enough. Yeah. It can be just enough. Yeah. Me just yeah. playing the one and the five. You know what I mean? 
it's, it's, it's a language uh, that uh, and, uh, uh, yeah. that communicates uh, a mutuality that it, that that, uh, 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 that that gives life to so much impersonal joy and a joy to everyone watching and experiencing it. So I was like, I have to master that because <laughs> if I can do that, you know, I'm a diplomat. It's an interesting thing to find a mission as, as a musician, as an artist, and a thing to strive for. Because uh, being, you know, I, I definitely feel like I'm competitive type as well. Mm-hmm. And finding your own mission and defining that mission for yourself as it continues to change every day, every month, every year, you know. Mm-hmm. And growing as the experiences come about, you know. And so uh, it's I, I definitely admire the... Uh, the effect that moving to New Mexico has had in your life and, yeah. and enriched your I'm just glad I relationship with the instrument. I'm man. glad that New Mexico had receptive arms and um, the insight to maybe see what uh, I knew in my heart. I was just like, man, if somebody would just understand, like I could, I could really do this. I could really, I could be a great teacher. I could be a great help. Uh, I give a, a, a large credit to. Do you know uh, Ryan Finn? I don't know if I know that Ryan Finn. He's a trombone player who okay. lives in Los Alamos. Okay. Major teacher. Hmm. Uh, hmm. He has a, a jazz project program that he runs, and we do a, a clinic. Uh, before, it was a clinic that ran all summer. Hmm. Now it'll run as a workshop. Is that is that up at the middle school? Yeah, it's at the middle school. Oh, or actually, it's through the uh, the Los Alamos uh, uh, Music Academy. Okay. It'll okay. be through there. Nice. Yeah, but the, the, uh, the name Ryan Finn, and he teaches out there. And I played at the gym. This all started. It all started because of David Rogers who I took his bass and I played Ryan Finn's bass or I played uh, played bass for D- uh, David sat down during a jam session and Ryan saw me play and he was like hey man you can really play I have this jazz project thing why he would even assume that I could do that yeah is like the biggest thing I'm grateful for I think but you know that's beautiful yeah shut up Claudio damn it beautiful Yo. Beautiful. But beautiful. beautiful. Da, da, da. Yeah, I'm just glad I can help these kids. I just want to help them be good at music. Because if they can speak that language, they can be a diplomat too. They can speak that unspoken language. Okay, everyone around you is killing each other and has gripes. And even on a personal level, like I have, I do uh, things for Convivo. I, like, I do these uh, 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 orchestral coachings for chamber music. Mm-hmm. And I'll be seeing these kids and. I know that like one of the kids does not like people at all. She does not like people. One of the guys has a very high opinion of himself. And one of them is just getting started. But when they play music, they adjust. They listen. They share. And that occurs. What can occur, um, you know, naturally, at least in this day and age, it could when I was a kid in this social network age where everybody's like, Cell phone center, you know, mm-hmm. um, it can occur through music, and I'm just grateful to to have them share uh, that experience and take it seriously, to mutually take it seriously. That's another big, I think, big thing. Mm. That's awesome. All right, mm. we're gonna take a break with Michael Bird, and oh. we'll be right back with Yay. Art Talk Music. Thank you. 
<laughs> we're back. Buster Rhymes. So we were talking a little bit. We we were talking quite a bit about a lot of stuff off air. But well, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, th- we were talking about it. I, I was talking about, it and I, he didn't. I'm going to articulate it and draw it at the same time. Yeah. That if like musicians had cards like athletes, yeah. Like you could, you if you thought about it like that, then you can. I think that we could manage gigs more efficiently. Like I'm right now, I'm thinking of like a Marvel Universe database, right? Like, yeah. I definitely think like athleticism is a skill set that a musician can have. Yeah. At a certain instrument. Let's take like I play bass. Yeah. But let's talk about piano, like a piano player. Yeah. Like a piano player can have high athleticism. So we're looking at a certain piano player, like his name is like uh, uh, Josh Jones. I'll just say, just to keep it easy. Yeah. And he's a piano player. Um, so his athleticism is high, which means he has a great ability. Obviously, he practiced his like the 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 or like his his hand in. The velocity stuff and his his technique and his facility, his ability to go places are great. Right. Um, and then you could say his entertainment value is high, which means he smiles a lot. And when people watch him play, they're highly impressed. Yeah. Right. So that's a high skill. So I gave his athleticism a nine, which is like X Men status in my book. Yeah. But his entertainment value is I'll be generous. I'll say a seven. I won't be Spartan. Um, and then another attribute that is like is musicality and let's just say i love you josh jones because you're full of musical virtue but your musicality is low so what kind of player on the gig are you going to get when you when we talk about this should we be offended by this conversation no i don't think so no so what kind of player if you see a player like, oh, oh i forgot an important stat how his versatility like his ability to hop through tunes. We're talking about piano players. Is he a jazz player? Is he a funk player? Let's say he's highly vers- even he's highly versatile, uh, highly entertaining, highly athletic, without musicality. Is he your first call? No. No. Are, we, are you offended by this conversation? No. Yeah. So in my mind, I feel like every musician should have a st- have a stat sheet. A healthy balance. And if of, they have a freak skill, it can be like, you know. I think I that, think that's cool, huh? You know, I'm and and not to get on the bandstand, but I mean, mm-hmm. you know, uh, not to preach, mm-hmm. but there has to be a healthy balance of all of the aspects of being a musician. Sight reading, yeah, I mean, sight reading, being mm-hmm. able to catch anything that's thrown at you, as well as, uh, like you said, versatility. Uh, beyond that, being able reliability. to reliability. Oh, reliability is Woo! undeniable. I used you know? to suck at that, man. I've yeah. made a lot of people mad. I I've made a lot of people mad. Because yeah. I'm a space cadet. So imagine a young space cadet. Yeah. I'm an old space, space cadet now, but a young space cadet, like I would flake on people and be like, they'd be like, you were supposed to be in our gig. And like, I'd be like, what are you talking about? I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. I, I just know that it's Tuesday and I'm at Burger King. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was yeah. that guy. It took me a long time to develop a sense of understanding yeah. of people's feelings. But like reliability is an important stat. You know, so if I said that Josh Jones is highly reliable, all of a sudden that makes up for his musicality, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And what if his rhythm is average? Let's say like six or seven. You see what I mean? That matters. I like playing with people with rhythm. The only, in honesty, in honesty, work aside, the only people, and you can answer this out loud or not answer this out loud, um... I'll just say it because uh, cause I, cause I feel like I'm just talking to a friend right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the only people I enjoy playing with are people who have eights and up in rhythm. Yeah, I don't even want to like, it's not even fun playing with someone who kind of gets rhythm. Like, I don't want to play changes with people who lose rhythm and are not uh, submissive to the movement of where the music has gone to. It's it's a it's a keeping the movement of yes. the music going. You you were talking about that, and earlier. I don't want to feel I don't want to offend anybody by saying that, but that stuff matters. Yeah, you know that's the cleverness of jazz to be able to play through a form all the way through a form with grace until you hit the end, and then you don't even have to end with grace, but you have to know where you are. Yeah. you yeah. know yeah. it's like understanding that is like, to me at least, is actually what the music is about. That's where the freedom actually is, to actually understand where it is. In the mundane, in the average. 
we were, we were also talking about off air the idea of if you can teach a uh, a student I feel. Don't know why I just said that mundane average. <laughs> My clever? I'm not clever. Please, <laughs> please. <laughs> I drive with, I have tape on the back of my car. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a banner to no matter what success life will bring me in the future. Uh, I have tape on my car. Is, that's there, the car is there anything wrong with taking the economic route to make your shit work? Like I, I didn't think, take I the economic route. Wrong. I just, I never assumed I was going to be a musician again. I mean, I never assumed it. To the I, extent, you know what I was to the extent, to the here? extent, listen, to the uh -huh. extent of being an artist and a mm -hmm. musician, mm -hmm. when you are mindly, like when you when you are conscious of all finances in all aspects, and mm -hmm. say, hey, if I put some tape on the back of my light, it'll stay in place, and I don't have to you know, <laughs> pay someone to go do that for me. That's being economic, Gangstacrazy. in my opinion. <laughs> so hey, you know, money, no money. <laughs> Being economic, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no. Yeah. But the thing is, it's not economic. There's no way I could fix it. Like, there's a great deal of humor in being poor. Even being poor, if like the thing is, it's like to be poor. It's like there's it's it's funny place to be, because it's serenity. Yeah. It's actually serenity. You know, you know where the wall is. Yeah. You you know, and the funny the ironic part is. Is uh, the the musicians are able to see realms of life that yeah. most people would not see. Yeah. So although I am financially poor, I'm able to be the enjoyment of the vast wealth of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that ironic? That's that's something else. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Yeah. I don't care though. I think rich people are hilarious. I, and the funny thing is, I think they're. There is a, a sense of mutuality in terms of we all seek the same enjoyment out of life. Yes. You know, I think about like, um, you know, if we play jazz, I don't know if it would be well received if we play jazz in the inner cities. What do you think? I mean, I've, I've had the conversation with many people about oh. whether or not jazz is uh, a music of today or not. But beyond it being a music of today or not, I think it is undoubtedly um, a music that if you play it correctly and honestly, mm -hmm. can make people move and groove. And that's what music is for. Oh, you, so and you're so talking you're about playing, the rhythm of it. Yeah. I'm, ju I, I'm just saying jazz in general because obviously it's a big umbrella. You mm -hmm. know, There's jazz fusion, there's jazz funk, there's jazz... There's Latin jazz, you know. Mm. There is uh, avant-garde jazz. It's funny. As a There's bass player. swing jazz. I, and maybe I don't play enough gigs. Maybe I don't play enough gigs to know this. But I don't know what any of those styles mean. When somebody says play Latin, I'm just trying to connect. With I mean, that's that, that, that right there that you just brought up is the ultimate question. Whoop, not whoop, just whoop, to bass players. The ultimate but, question. <laughs> not just to bass players, but also to drummers. I mean, I, I, I had the op am having the opportunity to substitute for Kanoa Kalahi at the Apple's performance space uh -huh. and teach his three ensembles. And the drummer yesterday in the classes we were teaching it was saying, I don't really know what it means when, I, when it says Latin, so I'm just going to play what I keep playing. <laughs> 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 and it's like, all right. One, you know, one, thing, I I, one you know? thing I suggest to, to starting players, players who are, or not starting players, any player, <laughs> is just learn to do the same thing over and over again. And then get on a gig and then tear it loose. Yeah. Like the real, the real challenge, the real virtue in music is gained by doing the most simple things yeah. over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. I mean, and, and this. And over and over and over and over. And the thing is, is once that becomes second yeah. nature yeah. and then you let it go. Muscle memory. Yes. Yeah. Not yeah. even muscle memory. It's tattooed in you know, you know, yeah, like it's branded into you. Do you have iRo Pro? Do you have iRo Pro? Of course, Pro? of course. Okay, you know what I've been doing? Yeah, uh, I've been practicing. I take tunes right now. I'm, I'm trying to solidify my tune vowel. iRo Pro, for all those who don't know, is an application on it's your great. phone that is basically like it compiles all of the real books as jazz musicians use it as a directory for all the different tunes and the changes. And you can write your own happen. changes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a piece of cake. And download all kinds of different Styles, forms. change styles. Oh, yeah. That's when I just found out. And it's got a backing dinosaur. track nowadays. It's it's obviously upgraded over the years, you know, since it Technology. initially started. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so at any rate, I've been taking iReal Pro and it has this uh, feature that it can go up a half step. Mm. Every time the uh, the repeat sign hits. Oh, okay, okay. 
Gangster oh. Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> I say it's so weak. I, I, there's, the, hey, the only thing gangster about me is my work ethic. I'm like, see, I see, I see practice like a sport, and that's the di- the difference. I think I think that's I think that is a healthy approach in general good, as a musician. Good, because it's, I don't even feel yo, like I'm, it's a vicious attitude. Well, I don't with feel with vicious. any of the crafts of of being a comedian or being a poet or being a, an author. When you approach your craft as an as an as an athlete does, mm-hmm. you are in like you are totally drenching yourself in all of the work. Yeah, yeah. because an athlete does that; they prepare for game day. You and know so, what I mean? as a as a it, you know, to me, like sports and and particularly jazz and maybe other genres feel feel as exclusive as as I do by saying jazz. Yeah, um, it's has a freedom element of freedom and. And yet they're saying things that we're used to hearing. Yeah. We're used to the sound of a layup. We're used to the uh, the, the, the the smash of a dunk. And the timing of those moments it, 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 in, in and of itself is musical. It's like symphonic in a sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, or, mu- or jazz in a sense because it's fluid. It's an active game. And so for us as a jazz musician, for me, is it's, uh, it's about... A uh, versatility matched with sincerity, like how much how much am I trying to say musically versus how much uh, uh, I'm trying to be. I don't want to overstate things uh, with virtue. Like I just want to say what I want to say. Uh, as a matter of fact, Claudio, do you feel like when you're playing through changes of a song, do you feel like you wrestle with? Uh, um, being sincere. Do you ever feel like you just want to take off and you don't know why, but you don't think it's the smart, but you know it's not the smartest thing? <laughs> I, I have those natural tendencies as, as a human being in my daily life, like sometimes wanting to do the wrong thing and, you know, mm. step out of line. Do you feel that when you're playing? Though? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a musician. You, you know, well. I, and it just occurred to me, you know what playing jazz music is like? Hmm. Jazz music is like the scene in Indiana Jones where the boulder is running after uh, where the boulder's coming down it's following and Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones is running because yeah. what we're doing is we're producing a, we're, the, the goal is to produce a sincere spontaneous movement in in respect to the the the, the, the momentum of the music prov- the background provided for us yeah it's 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 relentlessly uh, spontaneous yeah do you yeah. see what I mean yeah yeah I'm definitely impressed by the ability for us as human beings nowadays more than ever to not just uh, philosophize about what jazz does and mm-hmm. the idea of what it can be, but also um, the craft of getting to redefine what jazz means for exactly. us. And you know? because of my background, because of my unusual background in mm-hmm. that, like I, I, the last thing I did playing as a, uh, a Broadway musician mm-hmm. and then um, I'm not tied to the, the, to what jazz was. To me, when I see changes, I just see the 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 what the changes create in my mind. Mm-hmm. Granted, you know, playing with guys like John Rangel, he showed me a lot of the history. I'm getting to retaught taught a lot of the history. Um, I feel like jazz the has a potential to actually transcend its history, just by virtue that it's just a palette of color. It's just color mm-hmm. over changes. Mm-hmm. You you, I highly suggest. That the person who creates these colors learn about rhythm because rhythm is a color too. I, yeah. Rhythm is a canvas. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an inescapable canvas. You you there's you can say so much, but if to not understand rhythm separates you from the music. But there's no, to me that's a fact. I don't know if you think that's a fact. No, no, without a doubt. I I, I yeah. in my opportunities to teach, I teach kids about the reality that music is harmony rhythm and melody mm-hmm. and the conjunction of the the marriage of all of those things produces this song and the effect that the song has on us mm-hmm. undeniably man yeah and rhythm is good and yeah. rhythm is good yeah and i think for american kids like i mean i think r- rhythm is also primal it also taps into something that all of us as human beings have sure and sometimes do not but the the current state honor. of the most popular forms of music in in our country, uh, are it's almost like anti-rhythm. 
No, I wouldn't say that. Like what? Like like EDM and like electronic music is it's kind of. I would just say like it's going to be quite difficult to produce that naturally. I mean, don't you think? Look beyond that. We're good musicians. Well, beyond naturally, I, I think music moves in cycles, like uh, mm-hmm. like like so many things in history. Which is fine. Do. Like but you know, like, electronic. Like I'm not dissing electronic music. What I'm really saying is like, right? If if it was up to us, yeah. Like it, we got all, all capable musicians we know, and we said we were going to produce that type of music. Yeah, that'd be incredibly difficult. For for us because we don't know about it, but as, as a musician, as a musician that does that that type of music, I mean, that's just your bread and butter. It's like coming over to bass player's house and being like, "Let's play all the things you are." You're like, "All right, where wow. where you want it?" You know, wow. But my opinion of of what, like I said, I live in a what, cave. I don't know. Well, my opinion of what of what um, uh, EDM and and mm-hmm. that whole movement of uh, kids going into that scene. Well, that's incredibly rhythmic music. You know you what's know? funny, is and it's and beyond it being music that might or might not be able to be created uh, naturally. I mean, I've had this conversation with my musical teachers mm-hmm. about whether or not electronic music, as it has come to be, will eventually be phased out and will eventually go back to acoustic music. And I, I, I embrace whatever will come. I the like electronic is, music, but also, it was part of my. But life. also, it's, it's it's almost like what synthesizer yeah. was. You know, like do you you see this right here? What like, is this still here? What I, I had these two earrings. I yeah. had these two earring holes right here. Okay, I was a raver. Yeah, like electronic music is very important to me. Right, you know, and it's very accurate, which is good for me. I mean, it speaks to what we're talking about rhythm and and it being primal and it tapping into something larger and more powerful than what we consider regular yeah. music to be. I and you, and when you move into mixing spiritual mastery, psychedelic mm-hmm. um, practices that use rhythms and uh, like even if you move into I mean not not necessarily having to use psychedelics or not but mm-hmm. santeros in in Cuba santeria, oh, sure, 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 sure. and the music that is produced mm-hmm. that is polyrhythmic sure. and profound. Like the, the thing about that kind of rhythm is the polyrhythms they create landscapes. Yeah, they create landscapes. I like, mean, I mean, they also create a, a sort of trance, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the layer of the layers of the rhythm creates it. It really is. It maybe to me, I would say a gateway. <laughs> See, and and it's a powerful thing about music. <laughs> but I'm it, affa- it affects us all. No, it affects us all differently, man. You know. I don't even think about that. Kind we of stuff. we can put all the titles we want on each other. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're all different. Yeah. I like to celebrate rhythm. that. You know? It's like to me, it's like to me, music. I, I, you know, I, I see the, I, 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 I've, I've flirted with the, with, with a lot of different elements of, of what music is. Ironically, I guess it, at heart, it is what I really wanted. Even to be away from it, to long for it, was probably what I really wanted. Mm-hmm. To suffer is probably what I really wanted. Yeah. You know, I talked to somebody one time. They, uh, they, they were like. You know, they were like, people would kill for your life. And I was like, and I, and I was like, yeah, what, what are you talking about? But maybe this is the road that I wanted. You know, and, I'm, and I didn't, in that which case I should say, I feel incredibly blessed. But uh, 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 the point I was making is, um, when it, I've seen a lot of music at a lot of different angles. And I feel like it's like that video game Street Fighter. Yeah. Choose yeah. Your, you got to choose your road. What, yeah. What, yeah. You know, yeah. and everyone's road is different. Everyone's road is different. That's true. Undeniably, man. So, let's let's kind of transition into talking mm-hmm. about what you're up to now, who 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 you're playing with nowadays. You live in Los Alamos, New Mexico, but you yes. play quite a bit in Santa Fe, yeah. In general, in, in northern New, New Mexico, Mexico yeah. you know. I just played the Al- outpost recently with a, a wonderful trumpet player, Christine Fawson. Um, she had taught uh, taught in Berkeley for a good while. Um, and she's a singer. I I don't even know why I called her a. Uh, uh, trumpet. She is a trumpet player by every stretch of the imagination. She's the realest musician that I think I've ever known in person. Hmm. I'm just glad to know her. Hmm. And so is John Miguel. I played with John Miguel, and I'm just honored to play with him every second because he's really lifting me up. He's really, 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 really. He, uh, he's a master. Lifted my caliber. I mean, yeah, you know, master, master. Is, is definitely a heavy term that he's is tossed master. around quite a bit, but that man is and like he's so an humble. All, uh, uh, in in my opinion, is as far as master, it's his 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 uh, his way of living because mm-hmm. he's not just a pianist. That guy's able to play so many. He's he's 
playing crazy stuff on the guitar mm-hmm. that I'm like, yo, show me that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man, it's just some it's Ben so Mondo. It's just some Ben it's Mondo so videos I've been he watching. He gives me bass it's lessons. Like, Whoa. He gives me bass lessons. He's like, dude, that's what I'm saying. He's like, dude, you should play this right here. That's Practice what, this to get that's the shape what I'm in your saying, hand. Man, he's I was all, like, jo- yes. John Miguel yes. for me has always been a, a mentor in my life because mm-hmm. of uh, the the relationship we and, initially and, established, and, you know what? and we continue that to this day. When he's you think about it, like we are doc. You teach music, Claudio. I mean, you know, I, I do. You know, I like. I like. Do you have any, I always any tell Padawans? people that I don't. You, you have know, any Padawans running around? Padawans. The Star Wars reference? No. Sorry, sorry. You don't watch Star head. Wars? Went over my head, man. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, bro. That's a, you're the only person <laughs> on earth that doesn't watch Star Wars. <laughs> Come on, there's more of us. Now I feel Come really on. blessed. This Come is on. a rare day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, yeah, I to me students, you know, to to teach students is like. It, it it's nice to be able to infuse my wisdom into, and in, you know, and to see how they understand it. Yeah. To see yeah. they them wrestle too. Some of my students, you know, the things they get are so great. It's like I see them wrestling with the same things that I wrestle with because it flirts with your ego. When you start to sense that you're doing something great, it's hard to pull it back. Mm. It's just that to me, at least, that was my struggle. Has that ever been a struggle for you? Without a doubt, man. Really? I mean... This is therapy right now. We all deal with all of these things, you know? I think... uh, You should just start inviting anybody. Just start like... (laughs) Next week, I have my um, cousin Jimmy's brother. He's going to come over. (laughs) And uh, we're going to talk some things out. (laughs) I mean, mean, the art of conversation is also why I got into this podcast, bro. I love podcasts. Because... I mean, for the most part, with a couple exceptions of, of us looking at our phones and stuff, it's an ability for us to sit down as human beings and mm-hmm. have a conversation and learn about each other. Mm-hmm. You know, That's I, the biggest thing. And I everybody that, thinks you know? differently. Even if someone thinks dramatically, it's just different. You know? yeah, yeah. It's just different. You know? I love it. And different. I think we all ought to practice it more, man. Yeah. So, but I guess as artists, we're more empathetic because we're more inclined to have dramatic like notion or dramatic like feelings and want to share them right and want to share them yeah that that's the biggest part you know is we also have the time to not just be thinking and Mm -hmm. uh uh, hibernating these ideas but then eventually projecting them out to our friends be like bro 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 i've been thinking about this thing check this out you know Mm, it's true but um all right so Mm -hmm. michael we're gonna listen to a little bit of music that you know people might have heard at the very beginning of this episode tell me tell me about it you know tell me about the this song that's got kind of a 70s 80s <laughs> 90s kind of you know vibe to it I, you're playing thing, a lot the, of the good thing the about releasing this tune is because i never released anything before so it's a funny place to set a standard this is a sneak peek it's retroactive right? retro <laughs> no yeah. it's just it's like uh it's like What's the name of the song? First uh, of all? Let's start there. Too wordy, and it just is to me. I was just making fun of myself, really, quite honestly. If there, if you find any brilliance in it, thanks. You know, I really, I'm really great. I like making music a lot, and I consider myself an artist. But I'm incredibly shy. I'm incredibly shy because I, uh, I don't know. That's just how I am. Like, you know, maybe one day I'll be less sensitive about it. But at any rate, this tune, uh, um, it just came out of me. Like sometimes I just hear things. And it's very complete. It's very complete. Like there, I can empathize with the with the notion that other composers are like that too. You know, they just sometimes things just come and they just fall out of your hands. You know, and actually, uh, my bass line in this tune is pretty immature. If you listen to it, like this is just playing bass coming off of um, somebody giving me bass and be like, "Hey, here's a string bass. We heard you play string bass. Here's a bass." And I was like, "Okay." I've produced this song right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always kind of played guitar because. So you're playing, yeah, so you're playing guitar in it as mm-hmm. well. You're singing mm-hmm. as well on it, right? Oh, yeah. Auto tune. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, telling but... you about auto tune. Don't be offended <laughs> by it. Hey, don't hate on the auto tune, guys. Listen, it's not personal. I'm not trying to imitate. It's an effect, baby. It's I'm not an trying effect. to imitate T Pain. Uh, the first time I heard Daft Punk, and I told you this beforehand, the first time I heard Daft Punk, I knew for a fact that I want it to sound like a robot. Actually, let's forget Scrap Daft Punk. Let's be real. I'm a grown man. Zap and Roger. The first time I heard Computer Love, ooh, I was like, dang. I was like, this is ridiculous. If I ever figure out how this happens and I can do it myself, I have to emulate that somehow. 
Like, I don't know why. It just always spoke to me. So in the spirit of that, like, I have a lot of songs that are auto-tuned that may be released. But this one is released now. Oh, snap. Look ooh, ooh, ooh. Retroactive. <laughs> hey, don't be offended. <laughs> if, if you feel like, listen, if you're listening to it, if you feel like you're, like, watching the beginning of a 70s movie, thanks for, like, you invoking an imaginative thought. You know, that's what art is supposed to do, right? That's what it's supposed to do. That's what it's supposed Paying to do. Paint a picture. Come on, people. If you cry... Come on the show. <laughs> Come talk to Claudio. He is going to free you like he's freed me today. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome hanging with you, bro. Thank you. Having you on the podcast. Thank you. And playing a little bit of bass. So we're going to play a little bit more before we go get some lunch because I'm hungry, I'm my really man. I'm really starving, too. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up, of course, as right now, as I mentioned, the people are going to take a listen to this song. The name of it one more time is... Too Wordy. That was Too Wordy by Mr. Michael Burt. We're going to listen to one more number that he and I played. This is the beautiful song, Softly as in a Morning Sunrise. Thank you. 
Good. It looks good over here, you know what I'm saying? That's funny. I ended it on the B flat and it was like the same.